Wow, it's New Tool Monday, and it's uh, Vivor, yeah, yeah. This one here is the belt and disc sanding machine. It's been reviewed on some other channels, but I haven't had one in here, and I was like, man, I need to get one in so we can take a look at this thing. We got it, we finally got it in. In fact, we got it in before Turkey Day, which uh, I hope all your clothes still fit, because mine are a little tight right now. Jesus, uh, oh, every Thanksgiving, same old, same old. Anyways, let's get this out of the box and Let's take a look at it, huh? Yeah. Wow, so this is everything that came out of the box from Vivor for this belt and disc sander. Now, uh, I already see an option on here I've never seen before, so that's, that's a feature that's gonna be interesting. We'll get back to that. But right now, I'm just looking at the parts. We've got it, the disc with uh, the sander, not mounted yet. Also the plates that will work off the disc over here. Good long, wow, good long power cord. Yes, I like a long power cord. And of course we got the little miter, the, you know, or miter gauge, whatever, for putting this wood through or doing whatever you're doing. This is just an absolutely amazing because for the price, there is way more machine here than what I got. I got one years ago from uh, Craftsman and the Craftsman looks like a toy compared to this. This looks more like an industrial model and it's got a large base plate on it with, uh, look at this, really big heavy rubber feet on the bottom of it. So yeah, well, let's uh, slap it together and then we're gonna go mess with some wood, huh? Yeah. Well, I put it together. Uh, there was only three knobs, two like this and one little uh, small knob right here. That's all that really requires assembly. However, there's a little bit of assembly work to put the disc on here for the disc sanding side. And I just wanted to make something very clear. The screw that holds this is a left-hand screw, or that is, you know, it's it goes in, back, I guess we'll say backwards, for those of you who are not sure where the left hand and right hand is, but it's a backwards screw. So uh, when you do this part and you want to put the plate on and get the screw in, you got to make sure that, you know, yeah, you're putting it in backwards kind of thing in order to get the screw tight. Just, it's a really good idea because the direction of the spin here will actually help to keep the screw tight. So it's it's a good idea, it's, it's a good feature. Uh, 1966 Plymouth had the same thing to keep the wheel nuts on the car on the uh, right hand side, but uh, let's not go there, right? Yeah, <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got a plate here and we also have a plate here that comes with this. This comes with a lot of interesting things, but uh, there's a big situation here that I'm just gonna try to cover this somehow. Uh, I was told it's an eight inch uh, sanding disc machine here. The sander is eight inch. Well, the box said six. Uh, some of the listing said six, but when it came in, I measured, yeah, it's an eight inch disc. So I'm not sure, you know, what happened there, but somehow we, it is a full eight inch. So it's a, it's a big one. Also, this is a 36 inch belt. So it's a 36 by four. It's a nice, you know, standard size, but you get a nice work table here. This I'm not too fussy on. This is kind of flimsy. They're, they're pretty typical. And let's face it, if you've been around workshops, this is the first thing that goes missing. You put this somewhere and you know you never see it again. I uh, almost think the company should make a, a spot where this plugs into the machine somewhere so you never lose it or something. Because otherwise, it just seems they seem to disappear. The other thing I wanted to mention was the just the general assembly is easy. It's it's a no-brainer. You you know you don't have to use the manual to put it together. It's it's just pretty obvious. But there's six screws under this plastic guard underneath. They have to come off in order to put the disc on. Obviously, that's your probably your biggest assembly. Woohoo! You know. Now there's uh, some other things about this that are interesting. The rubber feet were already attached but they showed it in the manual as being that the rubber feet had come loose, you would have to install them. And for some reason, they're already pre-installed on this one. I assume they're probably gonna be shipped that way all the time. It's just, for some reason, the manual, they had put these as a separate part, the little rubber feet that this thing is on, which is really cool. They're real nice, you know, sort of vibration feet kind of thing. So hopefully this thing won't dance and walk around your workbench, right? This is something I didn't expect, so I didn't even see this coming. Uh, Usually you have that little black piece of metal right here, and they do, it's on here, but you also have this whole stand here to work off. So that, you know what, hey, that's cool. You know, that's a, that's a nice feature. The uh, belt was a little off center, so there's some tuning right here to be done, but again, no brainer, you know. So the other thing too is the belt release on this is really fancy, but it has a nice belt release so you can, you know, change the belts in and out. 
which I think maybe we should do that just to, you know, demonstrate how easy it is to swap the belt out on this thing because it is, it's a no-brainer. Got a nice long cord. I'm going to say the cord is approximately, I'm going to say six feet at least. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty decent for the, for the cord length. Power-wise, this is where things get really weird. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about it, I guess. I don't need a lot of power on one of these belt sanders. I've got, like I said, I have an old Craftsman here and I had a Delta. The Delta was considered to be, you know, at one time the Delta belt sander with the disc thing was, uh, wow, that was, you know, the machine to have in your shop. But I'll tell you the truth, you put a one inch stick through it and just shove it into it or something, you would stall the machine easily. You'd stall it, just was no problem. The Craftsman was a little bit stronger, so you know, yay, yay for them. The Vibor is stronger, but I've seen even stronger machines than this out there, but they also cost more money, you know. And at some point, I don't jam wood into these to whatever, you know, for to prove the strength or something. I'm using this as a sanding machine. So I'm lightly sanding things and you know, that kind of stuff, or even doing a disc over here to round something off, whatever. So I don't think that the power is all, you know, that, sh that should be your only focus. If it is, then there's uh, three, two $300 machines out there that, you know, will surpass this for power, you know, have at it. But I just don't use that kind of power. I don't need it around a wood shop and around, you know, woodworking. So. I wanted to cover that because I had mentioned it before. Uh, Jeff King over there at uh, the Den of Tools took one inch by one inch sticks and just shoved them into this one, the Bauer. I don't even know if it was this model. I got to check the video. As soon as I come right back, I'll check the video and let you know because I'm not even sure if it was this model. It might have been a smaller one. Okay, I'm back. I just checked uh, over there at the Den of Tools and man, did I ever screw this up. Uh, it was an eight inch Vivor, but it was an eight inch bench grinder. So it had a grinding wheel here and a little small 28 inch belt on this side. Uh, price wise, he's wrong and I'm not sure what happened there because Vivor a lot of times uh, lowers their prices and also does research to try to, you know, put more spec into the product that's coming in that they sell, which is, something that's very confusing to some people, but sometimes a lot of different brand name companies, it all comes from the same source sometimes. But what they do is their engineering departments or whatever will spec and say, well, this is what we want in the product. So, you know, again, you know, sometimes brand name can, you know, make the difference because they spec something the other one didn't. So anyways, uh, checked the Jeff and it was like, oh crap. It's like, yeah, it's not the same machine, but uh, price wise, it was, uh, it sells for 139. Jeff had quoted it for being like 165 or something. And again, I don't know what happened there, but it's it's at a lot, a lot cheaper price. And they also have a small one like this that's, uh, I think it's $98 or something like that, which again, that's, that's old fashioned, that's old school. Um, I think the Craftsman originally cost me around 115, something like that when it was new. So like, you know what, it's actually a lower price. Now this one here, same thing. It was on Black Friday. I don't know if it'll be on much longer, but I will put the link in the description below to where you can find this. And I guess I'll just cross my fingers, but even the regular price or the sale price that Beaver had on it was still pretty good. It was, it was a very good price, but it's, it's almost a industrial looking machine, which I kind of like. Now we got to run this bad boy and see how loud it is, right? Let's find out. Okay. Are we ready? Here we go. Okay, about 70, roughly. Wow, okay. Not too bad, not too bad at all, really. And now for the Jeff King Den of Tools test for a belt sander. We're gonna jam a stick into it. Well, I had to clean the camera up even though sawdust everywhere. I didn't put the vac on, which again, another feature that of course this has, it has this nice vacuum port back here, which will help to collect all that nasty sawdust from flying all over the place and getting on my camera. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is, we were able to stall it, but I had to really jam the stick hard in there. So, and the other thing too, which is variable, depending on the amount of grit you have here, you know, a finer grit obviously is not gonna stall as easily. 
Uh, coarse grit, of course, would be even tougher on a, a block of wood up here to stall out or something. And like I said, it's kind of a, to me it was kind of a, you know, yeah, okay, you can stall it out. So what? You know, it's still a nice machine. Don't care what you say, you know. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to do the belt change, but I grabbed a screwdriver. When you go to take this belt off, and it comes off this way, which is a lot better than some of the machines, because you don't have to remove any parts. But it gets caught right here in this little plastic right on this edge here. So to remove the tension, here's a slot right here. Just pull up with your finger. Keep pulling until it locks up like that. Now the tension is off the belt and you can get it out of there. But it has a bit of a problem here where it gets caught up a little bit. So you kind of want to get past this point right here. And then you can sort of walk the belt off. It's, you know, it's a kind of a tight tolerance thing, but there you go. And here comes the belt. The belt is off. And at this point, we can now put a brand new belt on or even clean our rollers, check them, make sure everything's okay if we have a used or older machine. One of the things about belts, and you got to also pay attention, is the arrow on the belt. These arrows have to be pointing so they're going down this way when this belt is sanding. And that's something that there's a few people out there have told me they didn't know about. <laughs> they didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah. so, and then, of course, putting it on, it's, it's kind of even easier than taking it off. You just slide it up into place, center it up on your two rollers, and uh, just bang. Yeah, slap it on and go back to work. Okay, somebody will ask, so let's just see if we can get this uh, over with. Looks like the opening is about two. It's about two and... Yeah, I'm going to say about two and a quarter. And the outside dimension is about two and a half on the outside here and about two and a quarter on the inside for the uh, back. In fact, I should check my back and just see if they'll even fit on there. Okay, I would have to 3D print an adopter, which I could do from here to here in order to make that work. But yeah, it can be done. Next feature is the uh, button right here that has a little lockout. So you can pull this out and lock this out so somebody else, uh, like the kids, <coughs> can't run it without getting hurt, right? You know? <laughs> so it does have the lockout button for it. So that's, that's a good thing. Oh, if you notice those uh, pair of red hands that are all bloody and cut off, that was for Halloween, and that's a leftover. We uh, decided to uh, not do the Halloween thing with the tools and getting hurt or something. I, I thought it was kind of uh, just not very tasteful, so we decided to pass on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now uh, the next thing I should mention is this duct, which is over here on this side, is also duct through here on the inside over to here. So when you're hooked up with the vac, you're actually sucking off both sides. Uh, boy, did that, did that sound wrong? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She sucks off both sides. Oh, boy. Uh, Beaver supplies you with a really nice 8-inch sanding disc that's a stick-on. If you've ever had to uh, change these off, and I've had to do it, to clean this disc up, I have found that the best solution is uh, this right here. Yeah, just use just use lighter fluid, but don't smoke or have an open flame around you while you're doing it, and do not drink this stuff. Okay, yeah, just thought I'd mention all those tips, but that'll help get the glue released and get all the sticky off. It'll dry up really quickly. Wipe with a rag. I would even take the disc off uh, when you're doing that and clean it up really good, and then put your new disc and you know put it on really nice, and then you know. You'll be, uh, you'll be good to go. Okay, put the disc back on and then put the uh, sanding paper on it. Yeah, you don't do the other way around because then you won't be able to get to the screw. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Next feature, right back here by the uh, dock, you'll also see you've got a switch here and you can press it in and switch it like that to disc or you can switch it here to belt side. What that does is when you switch it like this, it will help the ducking to suck off the other side better. Oh man, I, I try to get, yeah, anyway, any, or you can suck the belt side off more. Let's talk about other features. <laughs> okay, next feature. Uh, see, if, see if we can show you this fairly well or not. I don't know. I'm going to turn the machine up on the side a little bit so you can see it. But the rubber feet and grommets have a large hole through the center of them. So you can put a bolt right through to your bench or bolt it down or whatever you like. I would highly recommend use a decent bolt with a flat washer up on this side because that will help keep the bolt isolated from the machine itself and it just helps to keep all the noise down and everything well you know what i'm saying it just it just dampens vibration from the machine which is a good thing yeah next thing the, the specifications on the machine uh it's a 120 volt motor of course 60 hertz you know usa 5 amp the uh this size it says here is six it's an eight inch disc like i said they they changed and I don't think they've caught up with themselves just yet with a 34 by 36 inch belt 
The disc speed is 3450. That's, that's high speed for any electric motor to be running. So the disc is going at high speed. The belt speed a little bit lower at 2160 feet per minute. And so there's your specifications and numbers right there. Wow, so I think we've covered just about all the good features and points of this, this thing. Um, who's it for? Anybody that's a woodworker. Uh, also, I've got some 3D modeling even once in a while that I have to do a little bit of sanding on and something like this is excellent for, you know, just touching up. And again, you know, with a 3D model and just touching, you're never going to stall the thing out anyways. But the uh, idea here is that it's just, it's a good work, woodworking machine to have around the shop. You can do curves and, you know, touch things up really nicely. And also it's not real loud, which um, I'm pretty surprised. It, it, I was worried it was going to be really loud and it's, it's, it's decent. So any woodworking shop should be happy to have something like this. And it's a great, big, nice looking Vivor machine and for a great price. Uh, I've seen them. Yeah, the prices are very good on these things. So the, hopefully the, uh, the link in the description below and hopefully at least a discount code. If not, maybe the Black Friday price will still be on because uh, they were just about giving these things away considering what the price was. Meantime, uh, I got to get out of here. But thank you so much for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, ring the notice bell. Over and out.